Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Advanced Sky Replacement, as you can see right up here. Here is sort of what we're going to be creating. So we have a pretty shaky shot, and we've replaced the sky with a nice cloudy day. Here is the original footage. Not so great. Okay, so let's get started. I have some footage here where the sky is nice and blown out and we're gonna duplicate it and we're gonna duplicate it. Control D. And we wanna have three copies. And what we're gonna do is take the top copy, we're gonna choose Effect, Color Correction, Colorama. See that? That looks good. And we are gonna use this in a very unique way. We have the input phase and we have the output cycle. We're gonna to go to the output cycle and we're gonna change the preset from none to ramp gray and that applies essentially a grayscale effect to our footage we are referencing the intensity or the lightness to darkness and we are then applying a nice gradient but now we can manipulate this ramp cycle so if we click about right here about nine o'clock we can add a black point and what this allows us to do is clip all of the colors that are not totally white. So we have some mountains and things. If we just bring this around until almost everything is black, that will create a perfect mat for us to create a semi-transparent background where we can replace the sky. So for now, that looks pretty good. We can also click in here, add a white and bring this over so if there's any light grays we can then bring those as you can see we're kind of getting rid of the light white colors anyway the point is you can adjust this to match your footage now what we now have is a mat and what we're gonna do is take this second copy and change the track mat to luma mat inverted so what we want to do is key out the sky and we've effectively done that by using this as a reference of the alpha for this layer and we inverted it because we want everything that's not white to be opaque so just like this now let's go over to our project window take our sky footage or our layer drag it out it's a pretty large photograph I'm going to scale this down some and we want to put this underneath the top two layers and then just position it in the background. And if we bring the opacity down to about 50 or maybe 70 and turn on our third instance of the same footage. And the reason we turn it on is so that just in case there's any color in the sky, it'll show through slightly because the clouds are not completely opaque. All right. Now, our edges aren't looking too great, but we're getting there. Before we move on, though, let's track the shot so that the sky doesn't just stay still and it actually goes with the moving camera. So I'm going to create a new null object. And we're going to go to frame one here. And I'm going to double click on any one of the footage items. And this brings up our viewer. And I'm going to go Window, Tracker, Controls. This will bring up our motion tracking options. And what we're going to do is click Track Motion. And that's going to bring up a track point. And then we're going to click Track Rotation. And if we go inside here, we can then line these up to good track points. There's a pull over here that looks pretty good. And uh, we'll just scale up the search area this is sort of the capture area what we want to keep following and this is where to search so if the shot is really shaky you want it to be larger so that it can look in a larger area from one frame to the next but if you make it too big it'll take a long time to render and on the other end we can use this nice little mountain point in the background now like in the previous tutorial aka video copilot tutorial number one sky replacement we want to use the far away elements and 
if you're on a tripod, you can use some of the foreground elements, but preferably you want to use the far away element. We now have these points selected and we're going to click Analyze Forward. Okay, so now we've tracked the position and it's looking pretty good. You can obviously play with the settings to get it just right, but uh, that should work well. And now we want to click Edit Target and we want to make sure the null object is selected as the receiver of this track information. I'll show you why. And then we click apply and we say X and Y OK. Now back in the main comp our null object now has some position and rotation data applied to itself. So if we look we can just see that the null object sort of is stuck on the footage and that's what we want. So let's just uh, make a little room here and now once we position the sky element where we want then what we're gonna do is parent it to the null object and so now from this point on the sky will stay connected to the background and that will uh, you know allow the illusion that it's all part of the same shot and at any time you can move the sky around and it's gonna continue to link to the data from this null object. So that's a real good way to use tracking data to uh, you know track uh, scenes like this. Oh, by the way, this is Bobby and this is Sam Loya, of course. They're, uh, I don't know, they're coming back from an origami class probably and uh, they're pretty proud of themselves, it looks like. Now uh, we wanna work on the edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-compose these two layers. So I'm gonna select them, hold Shift, hit Control, Shift, C, or layer pre-compose. And that will allow us to put it into a single layer that we can then apply effects to. So I'm going to choose Effect, Matte, Matte Choker. This is a great plugin. If we zoom in here, we can already see things are starting to look better. And what this allows you to do is choke the matte based on some pretty cool settings. So if we bring the geometric softness down to zero, see you can see everything looks pretty sharp but if we bring that up just a little bit you can see we can start to smooth out the edges and there's some options to choke you know more or less um, depending on what uh, you know what you're after depending on what's in the background but uh, these settings are really easy to use you know the choke amount and the softness and if you play with those you can really get some nice results so you can see it blends well with the background once we uh, get those settings right you can then uh, you know add some color correction to the sky layer color correction I want to add maybe a little green so we'll go to the green channel and just add this up a little bit and uh, maybe a little red also Okay, so that's looking pretty good and it is fully animated. Now, to make even more adjustments, what we can do is Alt double click on the comp. And then if we click on the layer of the mat, this layer, and come up to the effects and controls and click the lock button. And this is only available in uh, After Effects 7 and CS3. We can return to the main comp, zoom in, and then play with the output cycle. So if we kind of open this up, you can see we can sort of add some softness into the edges so that you know it's not so sharp. Um, and if we go back into the comp and turn the layer on, you can see we're starting to add in some more semi-transparent areas that allow the blending to occur with the background. And uh, I'll go back over here. So anyway, by locking it, you can control the effects of layers that are inside of compositions, even though they're nested. So that is definitely a powerful way to, uh, to composite. So as you can see, that looks pretty good. Now, even another way you can use this technique is by applying the Colorama filter, changing the output cycle again to ramp gray, and then crushing all of the uh, gray area and then create a new adjustment layer choose effect 
color correction, let's say hue and saturation. And then if we place another copy of the footage below this mat, what we can do is use the adjustment layer with this mat as a Luma track mat so that now if we change the lightness it only applies itself to the area selected in the mat and that's cool obviously not to do that but say you want to just give it a little color colorize bring the lightness down a little bit and maybe just a light a light blue color or a light gold color sometimes just having anything but pure white in the sky makes for a much better looking uh, you know shot and even we can add a new solid that has say uh, you know like a light a light blue color in it and just add a mask through it and feather it F to bring up the feather and we just feather it out like this and then you can also bring this layer up or bring the opacity of the layer, uh, let's see, the, the opacity down some. And then again, we sort of lose our characters, and to fix that, we can duplicate our footage, duplicate our mat, and bring those two layers on top, and then set the layer by itself to use the mat as Luma mat inverted. So that basically we solo that basically puts another copy of our footage on top and then we can have a nice gradient sky you know without having to necessarily track our shot or anything like that now of course you wanna you know keep the uh, keep the intensity down you don't want this to be very you know over the top but uh, you can also use those other methods of uh, softening the edge to improve this shot as well but definitely a faster way to fix things now another great example of using this mat is color correction and let me just try to show you this really quick I know we're uh, running out of time here but here's some footage of just a little film I was working on and these guys are in a command center and the shot looks nice. Um, we didn't have a lot of room in there, so we didn't have a lot of lighting. Um, but if we duplicate this footage and we apply our colorama effect, we can go to the output cycle, change it to ramp gray. Now, instead of using the white as a selection, we're going to use the black. So if we click just on, see if we click on one side or the other, we can select the two nodes that are right here. See there's a black one and a white one but they're right on top of each other. But if we click on the right side we can change this to white. If we click on the left side change it to black. And then if we add another black at about 3 o'clock we can crush everything but the dark shadows. Now what's going to be great about this is if we create an adjustment layer add a curves adjustment and then bring this now beneath the matte layer that we've just created this layer and change the adjustment layer to track matte the luminance I don't know if, uh, let's see if we bring that up luma matte and now the adjustment layer will only affect the shadows so say you have like really dark shadows you could also use it to brighten it up similarly how the uh, I don't know, shadow highlight effect works but usually say there's a lot of noise in the shot you know you can bring this down so that you can crush the blacks and maybe then they won't be as noisy and then you can go into the mat and make an adjustment to how much you want to crush and how much you don't want to crush so also can uh, make for some pretty dynamic shots and again if you add a white node then you can make a, a more distinct selection around um, anything uh, you know any specific shade so let's see a lot like how a color corrector works with you know shadows midtones and highlights but anyway that's advanced sky replacement in After Effects I know it gets a bit boring with all the mats and tracks and alpha and all that stuff but once you get into a shot where you really want to make it sell it make it look awesome these tips are definitely gonna come in handy um, 
Once again, I'm Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net. Come check out the blog, leave a comment, and of course, check out our great products at videocopilot.net. All the best to you guys, and we'll see you next time.